Hi, my name is Reinhard Varees, and today I'm going to talk about uh, the security mechanisms and the signal box in my uh, model railway uh, station. This is the basic situation. You've got uh, a line going into the station and out of the station, two tracks uh, for the main uh, traffic, uh, with a station platform, station building, and a couple of uh, tracks for goods uh, traffic, and the level crossing that I introduced in a different video. In the German system, there's a difference between uh, Hauptgleis and Nebengleis, so the main track and the secondary tracks. The main track, that's the black one, that's for regular uh, train traffic between uh, the stations. And the secondary tracks are only for local uh, switching uh, movements inside the station. So it is important in this system to safeguard uh, the main track from anything that might happen on a secondary track. So there are a couple of uh, safety measures, uh, two especially. One is to have a lock uh, on the switches so that you cannot travel on the secondary track but only on the main track unless you have the key. And for uh, trucks that might not have been uh, put on the brake uh, effectively enough that could uh, run into the main track via wind or a truck bumping into them. There is a that's the strange symbol, a derailer. So if a truck moves in this direction it just ends up uh, next to the track. Same one uh, here. So uh, in my uh, signal box I have two keys, one for the switch and one for the derailleur. Normally these are locked because yeah, you only have the normal traffic on the main track. In this image I've left out all the Nebengleise, uh, all the secondary tracks, so we only have the main uh, tracks. And because the station is uh, unmanned, um, the, there really should be a uh, Grundstellung, a crown or a base a situation that's fixed, so that it's clear that if you enter the station, you end up on this track normally, unless uh, a different train is in the station and has unlocked the station and changed these switches. Um, if there is a train in the station and it has to pass, uh, a, different, uh, a different train has to pass, of course the two switches have to be set. Uh, for that there are lines, uh, wires running from the station building. There are two weigenhebel, two uh, levers. Um, you can see them in this picture. So you can draw them and then via the wires the two switches 
um, can be the, uh, can be changed. Let's investigate those uh, lines. So the station building is uh, over here. Um, let's take a quick look at the other station. Here we are. And there's a Vaardienst uh, Leiter Ausbau. That's the basically the signal box. Let's see. Um, yeah, we see someone with a red cap on phoning. That's the uh, Zugleiter. So that's the central uh, traffic controller. And you can't really, yeah, you can see it a little bit over here. There are two red and some blue probably uh, levers that you can pull. So that's the uh, main signal box. You've got wires uh, running from here to here uh, and the same here. Then crossing under the tracks and these go in that direction. So that's the basic ID. So here you've got one line crossing the rails, splitting and one going off in that direction and one in the other direction. Um, first it's running in some side of a kind of pipe or duct um, just to protect the lines if you have to walk over here. But it's cheaper to have Boink, boink. Lines running under, uh, yeah, over uh, rollers. So every couple of meters you have such a set of rollers. Uh, got two kinds. These are just, yeah, the, the wires run over them. And these ones are when the line has to make a uh, slide. Uh, it needs to have a be, uh, be, be uh, uh, go around the corner. So these ones push against the wires horizontally. Well, that continues on for quite a while. Till you end up, uh, the wires end up in here. There's a mechanism in here that moves the switch. And you've got a sign that moves. Yeah, in my case, it doesn't move for every one of those switches, but yeah, okay. And the other way, it is the same wire running uh, underground or in the uh, the the tubing. Because, yeah, the, there's quite a lot of foot traffic in here. You, people move uh, when, when there's a lot of uh, switching, they move around in here. And then from here on, uh, again with the go around the corner uh, one, and then it goes to the switch. And this one is a little bit more special because this, this one moves uh, that your switch and there's somehow a, yeah, I haven't mimicked it. There's an extra security uh, in here to actually lock those two uh, segments of rail uh, in place when the switch has moved. Normally you have two sets of wires, one for moving the switch and the other for locking it in place. But yeah, this is some kind of mechanism where that's combined somehow, I hope. Um, yeah, so that's that. 
of course you do not want uh, the switch to be thrown when the train is still passing over it and you don't want to make the mistake to have this switch in this uh, the straight on position and that one in the other direction because that just doesn't fit uh, for that you have the Vaarstrassenhebel or the uh, route selection lever so in the case of this uh, station we have one route going from here through track one to there and one via two um, those who know german stations uh, will see that often the uh, station building has track number one next to it but in this case of this station there really is uh, track two and track one is the one uh, opposite the uh, station building so i have not made a mistake <laughs> um, the switches they have in the german system a plus and a minus uh, setting so plus is a straight ahead and minus is uh, to the side um, they have a fast hebel, so the route selection lever so if you uh, it has three uh, uh, three stages so uh, route one neutral and route two in the case of neutral uh, the switches can be moved uh, freely or actually the uh, Levers can be moved freely, but uh, if you cho choose route one, you have to have the two uh, switches, number five and number one, in the plus position, and only then you can flip the switch, the, the route selection lever to route one. And if it's on route one, it blocks the two uh, switch levers. The same with route 2, it needs them to have them both in the minus and it blocks them in there. So if you the route is set to 1 and a train enters the station, it first has to move uh, the route selection lever to the neutral position, then the switches can be thrown to the minus position and then you can switch it to Route 2 and have a train enter the station on route number 2. In this picture, here are the two switch levers, and there at the end, you have the route selection lever standing in the up position. Then this would be neutral, and that would be for track number 2. Um, there's one, so the uh, levers for the switches are prerequisite for the root selection lever, and the root selection lever blocks uh, those levers. And there's one extra, if this one is in the up position, you can uh, move this lever over here, it moves like this. Uh, it can only be moved uh, if the route is selected on track 1. And if it is moved, it blocks the root lever in that position. And in that you see here a key in a lock and a key a lock without a key. Um, this is the default position of the station. So if nothing happens, uh, it's locked to route 1. And if a train enters the station and some switching has to be done, the Zugführer, the train conductor, has to has a key uh, and he can unlock this one and then move the lever which frees up route selection lever which you can then use to uh, do something with the switch levers 
So that's the basic ID. So that's how they handled such a unmanned station. Um, oh, for safety, of course, there's telephone, actually two here, uh, from which you can call the central uh, dispatcher, the Zugleiter, um, and ask him for permission to uh, let your train depart or let the other train uh, depart or to ask for permission to switch in the station. Um, this video is already pretty long, but I f even forgot something. Uh, that's how the um, operation works on a uh, mostly unmanned uh, secondary line in Germany. So uh, for a secondary line, a Nebenbahn, uh, the dienst to operation on that. They have uh, simplified and vereinfachte um, way of operating. Uh, I've got a booklet here. Betriebsvorschrift für den vereinfachte Nebenbahndienst uh, from 1966. So it's almost okay for my uh, 1970. Uh, up line. Uh, the old word for it was Zuglight Betrieb, uh, which is something that I still uh, am mostly uh, used to. You have a central traffic controller for the entire line, the uh, Zugleiter. In my case, he is in the end station, the, the last station on my line, uh, Kelberg. Um, the station we're looking at now is this one. I've uh, simplified the layout a bit and all the traffic, you know, the rest of the line uh, is also handled by the Zugleiter. Um, what he has to do is he has to maintain safety uh, on the entire uh, line. So every train has to uh, phone him and ask for permission to drive to the next uh, station. So in the first uh, video we saw a train driving to the station, um, then phoning the Zugleiter and he got permission to drive to the next uh, station. All right, simple. Um, the Station manned by the Zugleiter always has a proper signal because, yeah, there's someone who can, who, uh, <laughs> there's someone in the station so he can operate the signal. So those stations always have a, a signal. But the other station, due to, uh, yeah, uh, to make it uh, uh, cheaper to operate, they're not manned, so unbesetzt uh, in German. So there's no one to operate the uh, signals. Instead, they have a trapezium sign, just, yeah, just a kind of a traffic sign with a trapezium uh, shape. So it tapers a little bit uh, on both sides of the station. And you either get permission to drive to the station or you get permission to drive to the trapezium table. So the first train that is allowed to, always allowed to enter the station. So in the next example video, we'll see a train entering the station and just driving past the trapezium table. 
and uh, the other train got permission to drive to here. And then he has to give a beep and the train inside the station has to give a signal uh, either by beeping in a specific way or by uh, a light signal that's often on top of such a trapezium table. He can call in or give the train permission to enter. Uh, for the duration of uh, everything that's happening in the station, the train conductor of the first train is effectively the uh, Fahrdienstleiter, the, uh, the one handling all the traffic in this station. So the conductor of the first train has to uh, call in the train, then has to phone the Zugleiter uh, saying, okay, the train has arrived, so the track is free, asking for permission to drive to the next station, and asking for permission for himself to drive away. Um, so, yeah, that's basically it. So now we can continue with our train that's driving past the pitching table into the station. The first train to arrive at the station has stopped. Now it is time for uh, the train conductor, the Zugführer, uh, to use his uh, key, which I symbolize with this one, uh, to unlock uh, the station. So, first unlock the key. Then uh, uh, this uh, switch can be thrown and uh, throwing that switch unlocks uh, the root selector lever, so the Fahrstrasse and the Hebel. So in the rest state of the station, uh, this switch is manually, uh, is mechanically locked, and which locks the root selector hebel, which locks the two uh, hebels, uh, the, the two switches for the, the switches. So red means you can't move to a different position, and if you try anyway, it starts to blink, but nothing happens. So, let's unlock physically the station, then we can move the lever, freeing up the route selector lever, so it's not pointing at track number one again, but we're putting it in uh, neutral. So, no route has been selected, so we can move the two switches. And then we can select uh, track number two, which locks the two switches. And if you try number one, it won't work. So everything is ready for the next uh, train. The next train has to stop in front of the uh, trapezium table. The trapezium sign um, in front of the tunnel. And there's a light on top of it which I have not made operational but I've got a different one on the side of the uh, segment which will and uh, which does have a light.
We did here uh, the warning sign of the uh, other locomotive, so we can now give a long short long Morse code, uh, a K for common, you can come in. So we press this button because the train is coming from that direction. And yeah, now the train is allowed to come in. I'll show the other light and I'll press it again. The train arrived, so we can now ask the central uh, traffic controller, the uh, Zugleiter, and we mimic that by uh, doing a ping here. There's a telephone over there. Um, so we've got permission, and we, we means the uh, train conductor of the first train. We got the permission for the second train, and pass it along, and then it can drive away. The other train has left, so we can put the root selection lever in neutral again. Put the two switches back in their uh, resting position. Select the main route. Throw this switch again and then we can take out our key. Because we're sure that the uh, station is in its proper uh, resting state. And we might have already asked if we ourselves could also leave. And otherwise we have to do that now. And then we can uh, depart. After we switched on, which I almost forgot. The lights still have a crossing. And there's one extra thing, and then we're done here. Um, the extra key here, if the train conductors unblocked the station. You can also take out this key and use it in this block over here uh, to unlock a couple of other keys, which are the keys for uh, the switch. Uh, over here and over here, and for the uh, derailers uh, here. Um, of course, before you get your main key back, you have to return the other key and throw the lever and yeah.
the train is in the station and now it has to start uh, switching so it has to move uh, the two main uh, switches and uh, unlock everything else so we the train conductor who's inside this wagon um, there is this is actually a kind of locomotive which had an extra space for the train conductor but in the Eiffel which I model they just didn't like to use it so they just you always used the regular train conductor uh, fan in other areas of Germany it was often different but hey yeah it's prototypical so we unlock the station while filming with the other hand um, we will need uh, the key for the fly sparrow, the derailleur over here and for this switch and these are both uh, locked so we need the key for them which are these two so let's first unlock the station so we can now move the fast trussen hebel um, into the neutral uh, uh, neutral uh, position so we can move the uh, levers for the switch but first we actually sorry had to ask the central uh, tra traffic controller, the Zugleiter, for permission to actually do some switching, which we now have. So we can take out this key, which is now mechanically unlocked because we unlocked this one, moved the lever, and now we can take out the key and. This one isn't solid, uh, <laughs> it's moving, so I have to do a little bit, be a little bit careful in extracting. So I've unlocked it, so now the wooden part here can move. Now I cannot take out this key anymore, so I cannot leave the station at the moment because I can't get this key back because it's locked so one and two so I can do my work later on for the time being let's first manually uncouple and Start driving to the other side of the train. So, a small peep to signal. Oh, sorry. I first had to put him in the neutral mode and now I can throw the switches. I have to make sure that I stop before this sign because it says uh, halt uh, uh, I'm uh, switching so rangier uh, I am a rangier fight so I have to halt to stop here and turn the key to 
manually enable the level crossing. I've passed the switch, so I'll beep again. And I can start driving back. Pausing a little to pick up the person that just operated the level crossing. So let's see. Yes, the switch is free, so I can now operate the key and then I can operate the switch. And then we have the Gleis Sperre. So the yellow part is the part that derails the trains in that direction if they, by wind or whatever reason, uh, move in this direction. So, unlocking and opening, opening the derailleur. So, now we can start Again. Wow, it just, just, just about fits. So let's push back. Couple there's some trick with those cade uh, couplers to do it with something like this, but I just can't get the hang of it. Tiny, tiny, tiny little detail. The mm, let's zoom in. Yes, the red and white dot here that signals okay. If the train isn't past this point, you can safely pass a train standing here when driving over the other track. So, yeah. Um, sorry.
sometimes this long locomotive we should have excellent connection to the rails as a hiccup uh, there's something wrong with it and i haven't uh, found it yet but okay Well, switch again. And pull the rest of the train properly into the station so that we're not blocking uh, any of the two main switches. Now we're done switching, so we're going to lock everything up again. Uh, this one won't work as we still first have to uh, lock the derailleur, or at least uh, uh, enable the derailleur, and then we can take out the key. And then I can start balancing here again. I still don't know where I'm going to place this, so I haven't locked it, <laughs> nailed it down yet. So, bloop. Now I can have my key back, put it in here. Um, the levers are in the right position, so we can put the road selection able, uh, lever on the main track, and we can we can get our key back. So we're ready, uh, and we can ask for permission we uh, to drive home after we've uh, said that we have finished with switching and that the station is fully locked down again. So we get the permission. This time I won't forget to enable the level crossing. And we can leave.